In this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about a few more quality of life improvements, this time related around files and file listings. So we have our Mythic admin user logged in still with a callback from a macOS machine with the at file agent. So we can go ahead here and maybe we want to list the content of a directory. So we'll do ls, maybe the current directory and kind of see what's there. You'll see here a couple of things going on. You'll notice up here in the top right, it'll say update file browsing data. We'll get to that in one second. Here in the main screen, we can see kind of broken down information of the name of the file, the size, who owns it, groups, POSIX permissions, um, since this is Mac OS, extended attributes. And you can also go through and disable this browser script to get a bit more verbosity and see the exact content that's in these extended permissions. So we'll go ahead and look at that. That's one way to see what's going on. There are a couple of agents that also support this file browser view. So this is one way to view information of what's going on on the file system. You can also click on the drop down area of any of these callbacks and you'll get a lot more options to be able to select. So the one we're gonna be talking about right now is this file browser option. This will go ahead and open up a new bottom window that gives a breakdown of the stuff we've seen so far. So we can see here, we are on this computer and you can see a breakdown of the path as we go down to so slash users, slash it's a feature, slash downloads, and you can see all the stuff that's here. You can see the green check mark means that we have explicitly tasked that file or folder to be listed. And this download button means that we can, we've can we tasked that file to be downloaded. So if we click any of these folders, we can get more granular information on the contents in there instead of just the file name. We can see the file name. We can see, of course, here whether these are files or folders. We can see the size, the last time they were modified. We can also add comments to any of these, as well as a couple of other actions where maybe we want to view the permissions of that specific file, view the download history. We can even from here task that file to be listed, like a folder to list that folder. We can task it to download, we can task it to be deleted, all these sorts of things kind of hook in from this view to provide a more graphical way of doing this instead of typing out the commands manually. You can also see up here, we're looking at this computer. It's a Mac.local. We can see this path is the one we're looking at in the downloads folder. And you can see here again, whether you wanna list the contents of this directory, whether you wanna upload into it, and you can see which callback we're talking about here. So all this information is aggregated across all of your callbacks and stored persistently. That's why this callback information here is really useful because if we have multiple callbacks that we're using to gather this information, it's all presented in one way, but they may have different contexts. So it's helpful to know which callback we're dealing with as we go through and task, because it might be a standard user, it might be root account, it might be some other account that has super user permissions, all these different aspects kind of come into play as you're listing out um, information. So let's go ahead and scroll down here to this payload that looks like here that we can download it. If we scroll across, we can see the size of it. We can see the information associated with it. We can also go through and add comments here. Like this is my, this, if I can type, is my payload. We can also see actions here that we can do where maybe we want to view the permissions of it. So you can see here, these are all the permissions that the agent is reporting back just in uh, JSON data to present to the user. So all of the different extended attributes that are associated with it, the POSIX permissions, who owns it, the time, is this a hidden file, all this sort of stuff. That's super useful to see. You can also look at the download history. So right here, if you click this link or this one here, you'll download the most recent version, but there might be other versions. So you can look at the download history and see, ah, uh, yep, we've downloaded this file twice, task 11 and task 12. You might be wondering, why would you download a file more than once? Consider the case of things like downloading Chrome cookies or downloading files that might change over time that you need to periodically re-pull. So you can see 
uh, cleanly and concisely here the download history of every time you've downloaded that specific file. And again, for all these, you can click download and download it right there. You can also click the task and go straight to the task that issued that download. And again, all these can have comments as well. Super handy to go through as you're looking at different, different information. So that's kind of the file browser view of data. Now if we're going in here, let's collapse this data here and let's maybe do an upload task. So how is it that you're moving a file from your attacker box onto the target machine? So we'll just type upload. And here, because this is a browser, it does not have access directly into your file system. So you have to click and select the file you want to upload. Let's go ahead and upload Poseidon we'll give the remote path. So right now we're in the downloads folder. So we can do, uh, let's do Poseidon2.bin, submit it. You'll see here it goes into pre-processing and then submitted as it's going through and registering that file with Mythic and then having it ready for the agent to pull down. It went into processing where the agent was pulling down that file and processing it. And then it finally wrote it and says completed. So now we can do an ls in this directory again, and we should be able to see our Poseidon2.bin file whenever it checks back in. Yep. So now we can look and let's sort this data by name, go down, and we can see our Poseidon2.bin. So that's awesome, set up right here downloaded or uploaded and everything worked worked well so now what if we want to download something well that's as easy as just doing download and then the file name let's see it goes to submitted whenever mythic agents are downloading files it chunks them and downloads them in various chunks so you're not trying to upload a, a massive amount outside of the target environment into mythic so you can see here it's getting a chunk at a time you see it's downloading you can also go ahead and uh, look at this in real time. So if we come over here into the file browser, we can see here downloading Poseidon because it is a Golang agent, it's pretty, pretty big. And we're looking at three of 20 chunks right now. So it's downloading it chunk by chunk at a time. Um, as you go through, each time it gets a new chunk, you'll see this update. So now we're at chunk four a new piece up here. So you kind of kept aware of what's going on without cluttering up your UI. And you can see here, it, it tells us that it's downloading over, over time. So we can see that, that it's going through there. Another way to look at these files that you've been uploading and downloading over time is to come over here in the operational views and look at files. So in here, you can see uploads, things that we have uploaded from our attacker machine onto the target. And you can see their full paths here. Remember, we only uploaded it as like Poseidon2.bin, but the agent reports back the absolute full path on that remote machine. So it's handy to know exactly where it went. The downloads you can see up here, uh, the tasks that are associated with them, when we did it, who issued the download, what the file is. In a case of, for example, Poseidon that's still downloading, you can see this keep changing as we get more and more chunks um, to go through and download the full thing. So a helpful thing here, as it's not quite done downloading, it won't let you download here or here, um, and the information is not quite complete because it's not done, so you can't get the MD5 and SHA-1 of the file. As you're going through, and maybe you downloaded a whole bunch of files from the target machine into Mythic, and you wanna download them yourself, you can click each one and download. That can be tedious though. You can also go through and toggle these and download a zip of multiple files together. So download all of them, or you can go through and download just specific ones that you want grouped together. It's a helpful way to go ahead and keep everything kind of organized together. So that's going through and seeing file uploads, downloads. Again, you can see all that here. You see it kind of happening real time and in your file browser view of what's going on. And so once this is done, this will be clickable and you can actually pull down that file.